Hello fellow grumps, grumpy old gentleman on film. Tonight we are talking about films made in the year 1974, which is the year that our friend James Higgins came to the world. Hi James, happy birth year. 1974, um, James you picked a good year to be born. A lot of good movies made that year. So let's get right into it in no particular order. Uh, I'm not going to do a top 10, you know, uh, best, worst and all that. These are all great films. So starting off with Godfather Part 2, which I talked about fairly recently, and I watched the entire trilogy, and I really think that the Part 2 was much better than Part 1, certainly better than Part 3, so very good film. Here's a film by John Cassavetes called A Woman Under the Influence, starring his wife, the incredible actress Jenna Rollins, gave one of her very best performances, and I, I seem to remember she was nominated for Best Actress, and I think that he was also nominated for Best Director and maybe Best Screenplay. I can't remember for sure, but wow, what a fantastic movie. If you haven't seen if you haven't seen this film or a lot of the films that John Cassavetes made with his wife, uh, you need to start broadening your horizons a little bit. She was Peter Falk is also in it. It's a great, great film. Here's one of my favorite movies of all time. This is That's Entertainment. Uh, directed by directed by Jack Haley Jr., who took all these incredible film clips from old MGM musicals starting all the way back in 1929, the, the beginning of the sound era for uh, musicals had to be in the sound era, right? All the way up to uh, the 1960s, and it just, just so many delightful uh, scenes. And a lot of people from the golden era, like Fred Astaire and Bing Crosby and... Elizabeth Taylor and Debbie Reynolds and Donald O'Connor coming in to talk about films and introduce different segments. And uh, Liza Minnelli is also in it talking about Judy Garland. It's, it's just a beautiful film, and I've watched it a thousand times. Here's a great film from Martin Scorsese called Alice Doesn't Live Here Anymore. Ellen Burstyn, uh, Chris Christopherson, Diane Ladd. Just a, a terrific comedy drama that had a, a kind of an edgy uh, feminist sort of an early feminist slant to it. Well, I guess 1974 wasn't that early, but yeah, a really good performance by Alan, uh, Ellen Burson, who was nominated for Best Actress. Uh, did she win that year? I'm forgetting all my good stuff here. She may have won that year. Oh, well, anyway, terrific film. Here is um, Jonathan Demme's first feature film, Caged Heat, 1974. Well, they're all 1974. Produced by Roger Corman. This is... Um, sort of an edgy uh, feminist slant on the uh, genre of women's prison films, which were always exploitational, showing a lot of skin, a lot of erotic scenes, and a little bit campy. But this one took a little more of a hard edge. And what's notable about this film is that Jonathan Demme chose Barbara Steele to make a film comeback. She hadn't been on the big screen for about five years when she made this film. She played the warden of this women's prison and she was in a wheelchair and it just a, a really terrific, quirky performance. Uh, Danny Peary, in his uh, cult movies book, when he talked about Caged Heat, he said that Barbara Steele gives the strangest role of her strange career. And I have to agree, certainly true. Worth seeing, all right? Here is Mel Brooks, Blazing Saddles, uh, who were the guys? Cleavon Little. Um, oh, God, I can't remember. What the hell? Gene Wilder. I could not think of his name. Just a classic comedy, which is so so crazy and so off the wall. I went to see this, and I loved it so much that I, I took my parents to see it. And they, they rolled in the aisle. They really had a good time. So much stuff in this that nobody would ever expect to see or hear. And uh, Madeline Kahn is in it. Um, wow, just a, just a terrific, funny movie. Uh, let's see. And speaking of Mel Brooks, he had a good year. Also, Young Frankenstein, one of the best films of the year and the best comedies ever. It was, even, it was a lot different than Blazing Saddles, but it, it was also so off the wall and so quirky and so funny. Gene Wilder playing uh, Dr. Frankenstein. Marty Feldman was his wide-eyed assistant and uh, with, with a hunchback, which kept moving from one side to another. Madeline Kahn is in it, Terry Garr. Uh, Peter Boyle plays a monster. Uh, Cloris Leachman, oh God, it's just just so much good stuff in here. It's a terrific film. All right, now we're getting serious. This is Francis Ford Coppola's The Conversation, starring Gene Hackman. 
This was considered to be, by a lot of people, Coppola's answer or his response to um, Blow Up, the Antonioni film in 1966, in which uh, a young photographer is trying to solve a murder mystery by blowing up pictures uh, to, to a huge size to find details in the image. But in this one, Gene Hackman is trying is a, a sound engineer, and he's trying to to find something hidden in this uh, series of sounds and conversations that he has that he thinks will reveal something about a murder and she's just obsessed with it it's a terrific film dark uh it could easily have been made in black and white but it's in sort of a muted color and it's uh very very depressing <laughs> especially at the end it's a very depressing movie gene hackman gives one of the best performances of his life here is a classic horror film texas chainsaw massacre from uh who's the guy that did this can't remember. toby hooper right this um it, it, it simply can't be denied that it's one of the scariest movies ever made, and yet it was so brilliantly made that you you think you're seeing a lot more blood and guts and gore than you actually do. So it's uh, but it was it was really controversial at the time, and it just just really threw people off and, and blew their minds away. Really, uh, uh, not not particularly easy to watch for someone like me who doesn't like all this all this violence, but it is fascinating and it's very very well done. So. And it spawned a genre. How many, how many uh, sequels do they have to that movie? I didn't see any of them, but there were quite a few. And finally, we have this classic movie, Chinatown, directed by Roman Polanski, starring Jack Nicholson, Faye Dunaway, John Huston is in it. John Huston, the director, plays actor this time in a real creepy performance. Um, Diane Ladd is in it. Just a beautiful, beautiful film to look at. It's, it's an homage to the film noirs of the 1940s and 1950s. And it takes place in the Hollywood of the 1930s. And Polanski just does it so brilliantly that everything, everything just looks exactly right, exactly the way it should look for that era. And uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful film to look at, but it, it covers the most sordid story you could possibly imagine. So it, it has it, it evokes so many feelings from the pe from the viewer that uh, it is so rich. I mean, and I'm battling like a fool. I love this movie very much, and I'm so glad to have it on uh, home video, like all of my stuff. And I guess that's that's pretty much it for the year 1974. James, we're so glad you made it into the world, and we hope you stay with us for a long, long time. So anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. Comments are. Welcome.